Good morning and welcome to Ethical Perspectives on the News. My name is Alan Deal. Uh, I'm the current uh, president of the Interreligious Council of Lynn County. On this morning's show, we're going to be discussing the value of interfaith work. And uh, to hear to discuss this uh, very uh, important um, topic is three of my colleagues, three of my fellow board members from the Interreligious Council. And so I'd like each of you to just introduce yourself briefly and uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the good work that we're doing here in our community and why you value interfaith work. Greetings to all of you. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to present and to gather with my brothers this evening. Um, the interfaith work is inspirational for me. It provides for me the opportunity to fellowship with those um, who have other belief system, be it religious or spiritual. And I enjoy the learning experience. Thank you, Leoma. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Joseph Miller. Uh, I currently serve as the stake president or regional president of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Eastern Iowa. Uh, the reason I began participating in the Interreligious Council <clears throat> Leoma was to, um, to build bridges of understanding. Uh, I think as we build these bridges and develop relationships, we elevate the entire community. And that's something I've seen uh, come to fruition as well. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Joseph. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. I am Taha Tawil, an Imam at the Mother Mosque of America and the Interreligious Council of Lynn County uh, has a very strong uh, relationship with the community at large and I am very much interested in that because my faith tells me to communicate and to conversate and to dialogue with my neighbors. So based on, on that, I am very much into interfaith work and dialogue. Excellent. Thank you, Taha. Well, each of us kind of come to the Interreligious Council from you know, different perspectives. Uh, Taha, you've been here from the very beginning, uh, going back to, I think, 1994. Um, so the Interreligious Council has a, a good, rich history here. Uh, the Ethical Perspectives on the News, as you saw at the opener there, is sponsored by the Interreligious Council. And this is now going into our 23rd year on air here in KCRG, where we've been able to discuss a lot of great and important topics to our our local community. And so, um, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, Cedar Rapids, Lynn County, the surrounding area does have a rich, vibrant uh, religious uh, culture, religious community. And I think there's a lot of that that we can explore and, and we can be stronger by coming together. So I think during this episode, I want people to kind of become familiar with uh, for each one of us, what draws us to interfaith work, uh, what we feel the, the value of it is, and how that's going to make a difference here in Lynn County and beyond. So I think to kind of get us started, uh, Joseph, I'm going to reach, I'm going to go to you and maybe talk a little bit about you. You're newer to the Interreligious Council, I would say maybe the last couple years. You've been on the board and been an absolutely tremendous addition to the Interreligious Council. But could you talk a little bit about uh, what drew you to uh, the Interreligious Council and, and what inspires you about it? <clears throat> yeah, you bet. Well, uh, by day, I'm actually an attorney uh, in downtown Cedar Rapids. Um, so that's my that's my profession. That's my career. Um, but a few years ago, I was asked to um, assume this role as a volunteer uh, in the community. Uh, and not not too long after I started volunteering in this role, uh, I was always driving back from a, a client visit with a partner at our firm. Uh, we started discussing things, uh, including religion, and and uh, this partner just you know mentioned you know hey it, it, I always thought that members of your church just kind of kept to themselves, mm. and I thought to myself well 
I'm determined to change that perspective. Um, I What drew me to the Interreligious Council is the opportunity to really, as Taha said, uh, demonstrate our faith, live our faith, uh, which in the Christian tradition is uh, boils down to loving God and loving our neighbor. Um, and the, the experience really has been a rich one to learn from people as experienced as Taha and Leoma and to uh, be able to appreciate uh, the, the many, many things we have in common. Uh, it's a very powerful group. Uh, and so that that ability to connect and to um, uh, to elevate our community is what really drew me to this to this work. Oh, that's excellent. And I can attest, uh, Joseph, that you're not just um, speaking words. I've seen it in action as you've reached out and um, engaged and built bridges of understanding and cared for the community in, in a lot of different ways. It's been very inspiring to me. So thank you. Well, thanks, Alima, um, I, I again, you're probably the newest member of the Interreligious Council. Uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, what drew you to the Interreligious Council and what inspires you about interfaith work? Well, um, I was invited to come and to sit and get acquainted with the people. Um, I pastored the oldest church of color um, organized religious platform, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which carries with it a rich history. It is also the oldest church of color in the Cedar Rapids area. And uh, so I was invited by the former president, and I kind of stayed um, and kind of figured out what was going, what was going on, what was it, what was expected of me, what would I do. I always look for a learning opportunity among my peers, and I have been able to find it. As a matter of fact, um, Joseph and I had met, and he started drilling me on: Is this a good place to go? Is this a good group to be a part of? My like, yes, a wonderful group to be a part of, I think, uh, because mm -hmm. I was new. Um, I am not the newest member, but I am logging into maybe three years of the involvement. And uh, so I find the work interesting because of the people that are engaged in uh, the actual work of faith. Excellent. Thank you, Leoma. And I've had the opportunity just in the last probably two months to be able to hear Leoma speak uh, first time at the um, Latter-day Saints Church here in Cedar Rapids. And what a, an amazing service that was. We had our mayor uh, attending that and uh, Leoma was able to just really inspire uh, about probably about 300 Latter-day Saints. And that was an amazing thing to watch and to participate in and be a part of. So, uh, and then just here recently, your Thanksgiving service at Bethel AME, I was able to um, participate in that and was able to see firsthand, Leoma, the passion that you have for your faith and for your community. So uh, thank you for being able, uh, allowing me to be a little bit part of your life there. All right. So last but not least, we have um, Taha and Ta, you, as we mentioned, is a you're a founding member, uh, a founder of the Interreligious Council, and so you have an amazing history with the council. So again, you talked a little bit about it at the opening, but what what inspires you about interfaith work, and how do you, um, you know, what what continues to draw you to it? Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I will say, it started in the early 1986 with the interfaith task force under the churches united and i i they invited me there and i went after two three years the rabbi was not there so they invited him and he said either i come in fully citizen like voice and vote, or I will uh, not participate. So I did not know that uh, I have only voice, but not vote. But finally, the Churches United, they went together 
and they voted no, we want to remain as such. And from 92, 93, it started the Interreligious Council of Lynn County. It start on January 30th, and that was in 1993. I came from Jerusalem. I came from Muslim traditions and culture. And it was very much closed in Jerusalem. I did not have this opportunity to know my neighbors, to listen to them or to hear from them. Here in America, after I was hired by the Islamic Center of Cedar Rapids, and I saw that there is a big opportunity for us to get engaged in many civil issues and to build the bridges of love and understanding. I found ignorance was uh, the enemy at that time. I saw with knowledge and with uh, sharing information and being familiar, I start uh, to get, as they say, famous and we work together with with the rest of the churches united who want to be in the interfaith. And it was a long journey, but it was worth it because I learned so much from my neighbors. And I also share what I know about my community and about my faith and about my traditions and things like that. So it is an, a very rich experience, I will say. And thank, thank you God for that. Thank you, Taha. And then I should just say, you know, I'm I'm currently serving as the, uh, the as the president of the Interreligious Council. I'm also um, the vice president of the Humanists of Lynn County. So as I like to say, I'm kind of the non-religious member of the uh, Interreligious Council. And um, you know, I've been on it for almost seven years now. And it, what initially drew it to me, what drew me to uh, the Interreligious Council, was just uh, exactly what a lot of you have been saying, which is just making sure we understand the other person and we can empathize and humanize them and not stereotype them and to fully understand what inspired what what is it about them that it you know that why are they inspired by their faith how are they inspired by their faith and so um for me it's i'm very passionate about having conversations building relationships uh even when um there may be disagreement and even when there may be um misunderstanding but i think the only way you resolve that and the only way that you um, come to a solution is by building those relationships and opening those channels of communication. So it's something I've been absolutely um, passionate about and I feel is absolutely critical. And so I, uh, I, I just love that I've been able to build these relationships with, with you. So we're about halfway through the episode and I think I wanna get to what the, the title of the episode is, which is the value of interreligious work. You know, I've had conversations with people and they say, well, I don't understand, what, you know, what are, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Um, you know, why do you need to um, talk to other people of different faiths? I don't, I don't get it. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's not a super easy question, uh, uh, question to answer. And so I would be interested, I think we'll go back to you, Joseph, and say, I'm sure you've put a lot of thought to this. Uh, when somebody asks you that, what is the value of interreligious work? What are you trying to accomplish? What have you gotten from it? Um, how do you, how do you respond? Yeah, well, I think that uh, you know, I think that you've you've kind of uh, inside your question um, uh, helped me to to recognize that there really are two answers. One is uh, kind of a a broader purpose, and the other is a personal uh, you know personal value. Uh, I'll I'll start with the broader value. I think the broader value is, uh, you know, we live in a society that just is so um, bombarded with with divisiveness. Um, and when we are, uh, when we're reaching out to one another, really getting to know one another, um, I think we discover there's so much in common that we have. And um, we we begin to understand each other better. We begin to uh, to to shed misconceptions, 
and uh, to see each other as, as brothers and sisters. Um, and there's so much good that we can draw from, from one another, which, uh, uh, you know, means that, that we, you know, are building bridges of understanding. We are um, not trying to dominate religious conversation, but rather to elevate the common good in our community. Um, and on a personal level, uh, my life has just been incredibly enriched by having these good these these people who have become good friends of mine from diverse faith groups, and, and I include in that, um, you know, the secular humanists and and others. I think that there are so many belief systems uh, out there, and and so much good that can be identified and drawn from each of them. And uh, what a loss! What a loss if we don't reach out and don't develop for diverse friendships. Uh, I'd say for me, you know, it's only made me be made me want to be a, a better person and a better Christian, and oftentimes has taught me a lot about about my own faith and my own beliefs, including you know, from examples like Leoma and Taha, how to really love your neighbor and listen to your neighbor. Well, I would like to say the results of this work pay off. And Islamophobia is very much uh, common knowledge in, in America. And so we were almost uh, pushed aside or isolated because of who we are and the, bro the political problems that happened. So after September 11, the work that we have done with the Interreligious Council, it works. And a lot of support came from the community. Uh, I said last time about the bouquet of the flowers were at the steps of the Mother Mosque and also at the Islamic Center. So the community knows who we are and and that's because we engage just to, we allow and we go into the, the churches and they come to us. And especially the historical side, the Mother Mosque is on the national historical places as a historical site. So people from here and there, they come to visit. So it works. It lessen the the ignorance that people have about Muslims and Arabs and things like that. It works. Leoma, if if I may jump in here a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think that I have been so surprised at the reaction that I've been confronted with, um, with calling my brothers and sisters, my colleagues uh, who are part of this particular work, my brothers and my sisters, and for engaging my congregation in events. I, I've been surprised at the reactions so I, I had a conversation with Alan about this. I've even had some who have um, refused to fellowship because of the alleged differences in religious ideology. Um, I've even been challenged um, on that same note um, it's been said to me, yeah, but that's not how you believe. Well, I wasn't asked how I believe, um, but how do I behave is more like what I think is expected of those of us with um, a strong, solid <clears throat> belief system that we are our brothers and sisters Keeper. Um, there's a popular song, um, we need one another 
so that we may defend. Um, another part of the lyric says, each one as my brother and sister, if you will, each one as my friend. Um, we do and are expected in our behaviors and in our lifestyle to manifest the principle of oneness. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, even though we may have many ideas on how to achieve the principles of God, we're still expected to have that oneness. And that is what I practice. And as a result of me standing so firm on that, members of my congregation now are embracing it as well. We have a ball when we um, go out to Joseph's house, that's what I call it, <laughs> and fellowship with his group there. This past Sunday, when we had the Thanksgiving service, um, those members from Bethel, who were there, enjoyed it, enjoyed the fellowship. As a matter of fact, I left the event, the Thanksgiving event Sunday with some of the sisters and brothers of the audience walking in up to me and said, oh man, I'm a part of the Leoma fan club now. And I had to mm -hmm. turn around and look, who are you talking about? What fan yeah. club? <laughs> but uh, I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> but, right. but we had a good time as we did when we were out at, at Joseph's house. Um, and so it is necessary for us to understand that we are one, even our ideologies may be a little different. The basics of it is the same, that we are to love each other and to be good to each other. All the rest we see in our, in our society, and it doesn't matter because what's missing is the love, the care. And uh, I think that's where this interfaith work project will really manifest itself, if nowhere else but in our community, in our neighborhoods. I think you bring up a good point, Leoma. You know, boundary lines don't have to be battle lines. Uh, I think that there's so much more in common that we have than, than uh, we realize. Um, and it, it is a lot of fun. When Leoma was over, uh, you know, uh, preaching and, and singing for uh, hundreds of Latter-day Saints just a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, my wife sent me a text message uh, joking around that I shouldn't have invited Leoma to come to, to our church because now everybody's going to show up at her church next That's Sunday. Right. Uh, she's, she's definitely a lot more exciting to listen to than I am when it comes to Sunday services. But uh, Leoma taught oh, wow. us... A, <laughs> <laughs> the Oma taught us a, an important word, I think, from uh, it has an African origin, Ubuntu, which, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Oma means um, I am because we are. Um, you know, and you look at our, our, right. our, our city, Cedar Rapids, uh, we, are, uh, we are Muslim citizens, we are Christian citizens, we are uh, humanist citizens, uh, Jewish citizens, uh, you know, all all put together in one community. And, um, you know, I, I really truly think that when we recognize, uh, recognize each other for who we really are, see each other deeply, that, uh, that uh, we really do become better because of, of who our community is, who our circle of, of fellow citizens and brothers, brothers and sisters are. I think uh, this point very much uh, alive in Cedar Rapids. When I came in early 83, uh, someone walked into the office and said, Imam, welcome to Cedar Rapids. We would like to invite you to the chaplain's meeting. And then they made the reception and then they invite me there. And so the Interreligious Council broadened the picture and show that we are accepted. We are part of the society. So we give from our heart and we share what we have for peace and unity and love. And that is a family. That is a family. So Cedar Rapids and Lynn County generally 
are very, very tolerant, acceptance, and very lovely in, in giving you the chance to be who you are. I want just to say this for record. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, again, echo uh, everything that, well, that I've heard I, I've here got so to, far. I've got to jump in again here on that, that Taha, because I'm so, Alan, I've got to jump no, in on fine. that. Um, because unfortunately, um, the welcome that I got was not from my community. It was from those outside of my community. Um, there was one that made in my community of color that made sure that I was welcome. He now sleeps and that is Pastor Wendell Beats. He made a part of fellowshipping with me and letting me know who he was. So he came to me um, as a brother and introduced himself. Um, I did not get that kind of welcome. My welcome came from outside of the community, um, my community of color. And so uh, consequently, um, I was hesitant about the welcome. Uh, however, it never occurred to me that it may have been because I was a female. I've been added to a lot of can't be because I'm a female. Uh, but anyway, um, and I don't know that that is true or not, but uh, my welcome into this area came from uh, the Interest Council. Made me welcome, welcomed me to Cedar Rapids. Next, it was a civic group, the NAACP, that welcomed me into Cedar Rapids. Unfortunately, my welcome was not from, if you will, the household of faith. And it should have been. I've never been in a community where I was not welcomed into it by the household of faith. But uh, as as um, Aaron Doolin will say and tells us all the time, you don't know what lurks on, <laughs> under the mindset of the people here in Cedar Rapids. Well, Aaron is not here tonight, but I learned how to live with it. Um, and I'm fine because um, I have my, my young brother here um, by the name of Joe, a new brother by the name of Alan. And, and I have an experienced brother like me, like Tahoe. And Taha, I'm sorry. I, I don't want you to go to Tahoe. But uh, no. anyway, I don't know. You may so, need a vacation and go to Tahoe. Right? <laughs> so, Leoma, we just have a few seconds left. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And what I'll say kind of in closing is, you know, we have we've done a lot of great work. We've had a lot of great events. Certainly COVID was a challenge over the last two or three years. But the Interreligious Council has added, and I've seen it with my own eyes, tremendous amount of value in welcoming people to our community, enriching our community, highlighting the rich um, you know, just diversity of faith that we have here in this community. Uh, but we know we have a lot of work to do in the future. And so, you know, uh, we, you can go to our website at uh, IRCLC.org and check out what we have going on. Uh, we'd love for you to get involved. Um, we have a lot of great events that we'll be planning, um, but we really want people to be able to experience firsthand the, you know, just the, the rich, um, uh, faith community that we have. And so I want to thank uh, each one of our panelists uh, that was able to join me. And once again, we've run out of time. We could have talked probably for a couple more hours, but hopefully we can do this again soon. So for our audience, uh, thank you for watching this morning. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. Take care. Everybody.